What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman here for Stochastic.com, back again with the NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Thursday, January 5th. Now, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman. I need you to let me know in the comment section, who are your favorite plays for today? Who are your least favorite plays for today? If you have any questions on this slate, please let me know. I will be in the comment section asking any questions that you may have. And finally, I got to give a shout out to BetMGM. They are the sponsor of this video. You see it on the banner at the top and to the side over here. If you're looking to get into the sports betting space, if you want a risk-free bet of up to $1,000 and two free months of Stochastic Plus Platinum, all you have to do is click the link and follow the instructions. It's gonna be an easy one for you. Absolute no-brainer offer. Take advantage, get into sports betting, get into DFS, what's not to like? Now, we round out the bottom of my top 10. Dylan Brooks, Michael Porter Jr., Jaron Jackson Jr., Tim Hardaway Jr., and Jalen Green on the outside looking in. Who will be my favorites? My top five plays for today? It's time to find out. First up at number five, I'm going to Desmond Bain, shooting guard, small forward, eligible, 6,600, projected for 32 and a half. The goal is 43. He's in the optimal line of 27% of the time. I'm going 30 minutes here for Bain. They are in the back-to-back. -back. I'm a little nervous about that, considering he has not been back for a while, but feels about right here. It's around a 1.05 fantasy point per minute guy. 26% usage, 20 real points, five boards, three assists, a little over a stop. It's a really nice matchup here for Memphis against Orlando. It's pace neutral, but they are six point favorites. I love the positionality. I love the price. Bain has been fantastic. One of these days, he's just gonna play 34 minutes and we're not gonna see it coming. I hope it's today. Next up at number four, we're going to Jabari Smith. He is power forward eligible, eligible. 5K projected for 26. The goal is 35. He's in the optimal line of 28% of the time. His minutes are like slightly more firm than they normally are. This is a back-to-back -back for the Rockets. Generally speaking, Eric Gordon sits those out. So that's just one less normal rotation guy that's around. So 29 minutes for Smith. Could get upwards of 31, 32. Wouldn't be surprised. 0.9 fantasy points per minute. It's a nice matchup against Utah. It's not like the Jazz defense is all that good. Rockets only five and a half point dogs. So you expect it to be competitive. 18% usage for Jabari. It's mostly points and rebounds. We're talking 12 points, 12 and a half points, seven and a half rebounds, one assist, maybe a stock and a half. I like the price and the position, but I think it's just a really nice spot against Utah on a four game slate. At number three, I'm taking Spencer Dinwiddie. Point guard, shooting guard, eligible 6,100. Projected for 29 and a half. The goal is 40 and a half. He's in the optimal lineup 30% of the time. So lots to unpack here for Dinwiddie. One, playing massive minutes as of late. I got him in for 38. We know there's no Dorian Finney-Smith. They're just really, really leaning on the starters. Now it is a tough matchup against Boston, but it should be competitive. They're two point dogs here. So we should expect Spencer Dinwiddie to get the full freight in minutes. The problem here is that he plays so many minutes now alongside of Luka Doncic and to a lesser degree alongside Christian Wood. This is limiting Spencer Dinwiddie's usage rate tremendously. I have him in for 18% right now. You can make a case that it should be a bit lower than that. He's around a 0.8 fantasy point per minute guy in the role that he has right now. That is not very good. 16 points, four boards, four and a half assists and a steal. That's still the number three guy for today because of how much he plays. 6,100 is not a problem. Even at 0.8 fantasy points per minute. On this four gamer, given his playing time, given his positional eligibility, I still want to get to Dinwiddie. And I think there's a very reasonable upside where if the shot starts falling early, he could be more involved in the offense like he normally is. At number two, we go to Kenyon Martin Jr., KJ Martin, KJ Martin Jr., uh, whatever you want to call him here. Small forward, power forward, eligible, 3,900. Projected for 22. The goal is 29 and a half. He's in the optimal lineup 35% of the time. Martin is the guy that steps into the starting lineup when basically everybody, or anybody rather, is out. So in this case, if Gordon is out, Martin is going to start and get starter run. 29 minutes here, a little under 0.8 fantasy points per minute, but... The price tag just reflects him coming off the bench, and now he's not doing that. 16% usage, 11.6 boards, two assists, and a stock. Again, great matchup against Utah, but if you knew he was starting and you could update his price right now, he'd be in like the mid-4K range. But for now, because he's $3,900, $400 above the minimum, 
He's the best value option on today's slate. And he pairs quite nicely with our number one contender. Now, before we get to that number one contender, one last reminder to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. You got to follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comments section who your favorite plays are and then go sign up at BetMGM. Link in the description. Your number one contender for today is Luka Doncic. Point guard, shooting guard, eligible 12,800, projected for 66. The goal is 74, and he is in the optimal lineup 40% of the time. 38 minutes here for Luka. He's a 1.7 fantasy point per minute guy. He just, he's playing every minute he can handle, and he's doing literally everything on the floor offensively for the map. 39% usage, 37 real points. That is asinine. 10 and a half rebounds and nine assists. So basically a triple double plus two stocks. Obviously, this is a tough matchup against Boston. They're going to be able to throw a lot at him. The scoring could suffer here, but if they're throwing any doubles or anything like that, could open him up for a couple extra assists. All told, given the way that he monopolizes the ball, if this game is competitive, he has to be involved in a big way. He's got the biggest raw point ceiling on this slate, and he is my number one contender. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Thursday, January 5th. DraftKings version, it's around here somewhere, so check it out. Good luck tonight, everybody. Win some money. We're back again tomorrow morning for another edition of The Contenders.